The keywords that you choose can literally make or break a marketing campaign. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly how you can go about selecting the best keyword for your advertising campaigns to help you get more clients, more sales with less spend. Let's get straight into it. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna use Google's free keyword planner tool to get the estimated and average cost per click for the keywords that we're looking to target. So when you come into your Google Ads account, if you click on tools and settings at the top and then under planning, you'll have the keyword planner here. And what we wanna do is we wanna click get search volume and forecasts. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to brainstorm a number of different keywords that our potential customers would be searching for. Now, one of the really important things to think about here is thinking outside the box a little bit and also thinking about some of the potential keywords that customers could be looking for before they even know they need your product or service. So the goal here is to think about those symptom level problems that customers might have that would indicate they will or do need your product or service, but maybe they just don't know about it yet. So let's say, for example, um, we're a, a dentist, right? So maybe, I don't know, somebody has problems with bad breath. They're getting bad breath all the time. So maybe it's um, how to stop bad breath. Um, causes of bad breath. So these are examples of some of the informational searches that people might be looking for. And then, you know, the more bottom of funnel, we'd call it, those high intent searches are when people know they need a dentist. So they're actively typing in dentist, dental surgery, things like that. Now, the reason we put these ones down and the reason we want to have a mixture here is because what you'll find is most companies, most of your competitors will be bidding on these very, very bottom of the funnel searches. Right. So what happens is, for, you know, you end up paying a very high cost per click because the cost per click is calculated based on the amount of competition and the amount of other companies that are bidding on it. And then the customer just has loads of choice and it becomes very, very difficult to stand out. Whereas when you target the more informational searches, because a lot of the competition won't be doing that, you'll generally pay a lower cost per click. So if we just have a look at these now and have a look at the estimated cost per clicks here, you'll see that for our informational searches, we've got like 86p here, 98p, how to stop bad breath. Whereas for things like dental surgery, dentists, we're paying three pounds £4.56, you know, I've seen this be sometimes as high as like 20 times more than an informational search and a high intent search. In industries like the software security space, you can have cost per clicks of £20 upwards versus the informational searches, which might be, you know, 50p to a couple of pounds. So it really can make a monumental difference. So once we've got an idea of that, what we're going to do here is I'm going to link to this document in the description below this video. This is a tool we use whenever we're planning new campaigns for clients, and it just allows us to forecast what our potential numbers or profits might be from a particular campaign. So in the green section, this is the area where you can input information. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put the current average cost per click. So let's say, for example, you know, we've got this one of 86p. Right. So let's say we were to target. In fact, let's start with the high intent one. Right. So let's say we go after this one, dental surgery, four pound fifty six. Now, because this is a high intent search, we know that, you know, these are people actively looking for this. So we can assume this is going to have a high conversion rate because this person has shown a high level of intent compared to an informational search, at least. So let's say we've got a one thousand pound budget, which we're going to put in here, four pound fifty six. That means we're going to get approximately 219 visitors a month to our website with that level of budget and that kind of cost per click. Now, let's assume we're able to convert around 5% of those visitors into leads. If you've got this kind of data from looking at your Google Analytics, great. It's going to make it much easier for you to forecast potential numbers. If you don't know what this is, to give you an idea, average websites convert between 0.5% to 3% of to 3% on the higher end. Some websites can convert much higher than that. And again, based on the intent of that particular keyword, if someone's typing in dental surgery, it's probably because they're looking for dental surgery. Or maybe not, because that's actually quite broad. If I typed in dental surgery near me, for example, that's maybe more indicative that I'm actually in that kind of 
you know, mindset of I'm looking to go somewhere to get dental surgery done versus just more informational. Okay, so you have to think about the intent of the person typing this search in to the search engines. Generally, the longer tail ones are going to be the longer tail keywords. So like more specific are going to be a better indication of the intent that person has. But let's say we're able to get a 5% conversion rate here. So we get 11 leads and then 80% of them, you know, are actually qualified to buy. So 20%, we just never hear from again. And then we're able to convert about 50% of those into customers. So it means we're going to get between you know, maybe four to five sales from those leads that we're generating. And again, you will know what your average customer conversion rates are when you get people inquiring with you. And then let's say we've got an average order value, I don't know, whatever it is, let's say 500 pounds, right? So we can then see, okay, so based on these numbers, if we had 100% margin, obviously you can populate this when you come through this document, we're gonna be making about 1,193 pounds a month from this campaign. However, let's say we were to now target one of these other ones like this one, 86p cost per click. Now, naturally, because this is an informational search at this stage, somebody's just looking for the symptom level problems. It's fair to assume that we're going to have a lower conversion rate on this. But let's say even if we were to have a 1% conversion rate, you'll see we potentially still got a higher um, profit here, right? And if we were to bump that up to say 2%, Again, even higher. So even though we've got a lower conversion rate because the cost per click is lower, we can actually potentially get better profits from a campaign like this. However, it's worth saying that we don't know what the conversion rates are going to be until we run that keyword and also test the content as well. So another thing to bear in mind, let's say you know we had a blog about the causes of bad breath. You also want to make sure that that content is designed and optimized for conversion. So not only are you giving people a ton of value, but you want to make sure you have a clear call to action at the end of that blog so that people can take a next step, which is going to help you bump up that conversion rate. For example, maybe within the blog, you have a call to action that says, um, book a free dental checkup today. Right. So if I've got bad breath or whatever, you could say book a free dental checkup to find the causes of your bad breath. Right. So that you can then generate that lead. And then when they come in, you have the ability to um, convert them into a paying customer. Now, obviously, depending on your business model, um, it might not be the same if you don't have a kind of physical business. Maybe it's an online business. But the same principles apply here in that when you're driving people to informational search, they can still convert very well. You just need to think about the call to action on that page. Make sure you're delivering value in the blog itself and then you have a very clear next step for somebody to take so another thing to think about here as well and the reason that actually these informational lower cost per click searches can often work quite well is because you are now giving yourself the ability to demonstrate authority credibility and build trust all at the same time you have to think if somebody goes onto a website for the first time you know they're just looking for dentists and then they open up the website 10 dentists right and they all say the same thing five star reviews you know hundreds of years of experience between the team and all this stuff and they're all saying the same thing it's so difficult for that customer to know so what very often happens it turns into a commodity game where it's like, well, who's the cheapest? And they go with the cheapest one. So you end up getting really crap margins, people who are bartering you down on price. It's just not a nice space to be in. Whereas if you're answering someone's question before they even know they need that dentist, before they know they need you, you've now established yourself as the authority, as the go-to, you've built that trust. You've shown that you know what you're talking about. So a lot of the time when people do inquire, they might not even be speaking to anyone else. And this is what happens with the leads that we generate through our website as well. Most of the time, the leads that we generate aren't even speaking to anybody else because we've given them content, be it on YouTube or through our blog, that's helped them to solve the problem. So they've then come to us because we're the first person that they've thought of. Another thing you can do when you're running these informational search campaigns is to have a retargeting campaign. So you're retargeting them on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever it is, to then take that next step with you. This is gonna bring your overall cost per conversion and cost per acquisition down 
because again, you've already built that trust. You know the exact blog that people have been on, so you can now target them with a very specific and relevant message. Whereas for most people, they don't really know what this person's pain point is. They just know they need a dentist or they know they need X, Y, Z service, right? Whereas when you do these informational searches like this, and there are lots of variations of this, these keywords that you could create for your business or your industry, um, you now have, you now know the exact symptom this person is having. So you can make sure that ad is tailored to that, which means it's gonna convert much higher. OK, so hopefully that makes sense. If you start implementing this into your business and take this mindset and approach of testing and being willing to test, even if you let's say you were to run these informational searches and you saw you were only getting one percent conversion rate. Well, now, you know, OK, great. Now I know I can do something about it. The bottleneck is here. I want to get this conversion rate up to three percent. Right. And then what you do is you look at that blog and you think, how can I add more value here? Maybe I can put a video, maybe I can put a more compelling call to action. You know, so instead of just saying book a dental appointment as a call to action, say take our test or book a free checkup to find the causes of your bad breath or your whatever that symptom level problem is that you targeted as a keyword, right? Sometimes the more contextual you make that call to action, the more relevant you make it to what somebody's actually searched for, the higher that's going to convert. So if you start implementing these things, these strategies into your ad campaign, you will be able to significantly reduce the cost you're paying for conversions and you'll be able to spend less money, but often get more results. So I really hope that video has helped. There'll be another video coming up after this one that walks you through some other strategies you can use to significantly reduce both your cost per click and your cost per conversion on your Google Ads campaigns. So I'll see you there.